Welcome back. In this video, we'll be talking about the acid-base changes, and we'll talk about respiratory and metabolic acidosis and alkalosis. And we'll have a mnemonic for everything so you can remember it. First, let's see the main two factors in respiratory and metabolic acid-base changes. From the word pH, P stands for pressure of arterial carbon dioxide, and H stands for bicarbonate. Note that whenever you hear respiratory alkalosis or acidosis, it means that there's a change in the pressure of arterial carbon dioxide. And whenever you hear metabolic acidosis or alkalosis, it means that there's a change in the concentration of bicarbonate. Respiratory alkalosis is defined as pressure of arterial carbon dioxide that is less than 35. As we know, carbon dioxide is acidic, so the less we have of carbon dioxide, the more alkalotic the blood is going to become. We see respiratory alkalosis in cases of hyperventilation, because rapid breathing will expel all the carbon dioxide from the blood. Respiratory acidosis is defined as pressure of arterial carbon dioxide that is more than 45. And we see this in hypoventilation, because if you're not breathing enough, carbon dioxide levels in the body will accumulate instead of being expelled. Metabolic alkalosis is defined as bicarbonate more than 28. Bicarbonate is an alkalotic substance, so the more we have of it, the more alkalotic the blood will become. To remember the cases that would present with metabolic alkalosis, remember the nominic total. T for throw up, O for oral antiacids, the other T is for tubular defects, and A for aldosteronism, and finally L for loop diuretics. Metabolic acidosis is defined as bicarbonate less than 22. We subdivided metabolic acidosis into two parts, either high anion gap or normal anion gap. To calculate anion gap, calculate sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. To remember this equation, I remember the word natural. If the result of our calculation is more than 12, this is high anion gap. And we can remember the scenarios that would result in high anion gap using the mnemonic mud piles. If the result of our equation is less than 12, then this is a normal anion gap. And we can remember the scenarios that would present with normal anion gap using the mnemonic hard ass. Alright guys, that's everything I've got. Hopefully I've explained this well enough. Um, I've tried to use as much mnemonic as I could so you could remember these things. Um, hopefully I made this easier for you and see you guys later.